City Studio Theater in Hollywood. You are about to see Second City this week. At this moment, please make sure that your cell phone is off with silent mode. And please, no talking or texting during the show. Second City this week. President of the United States, I should be watching Hawaii Five-0. Yes. <laughs> Mr. President, I am a recent graduate of high school who aspires to go to college, but you cut funding for student loans, I, so I, now I don't know if I'll go. I didn't cut Pell Grants. No, that's true. But my parents only make $40,000 a year, which is basic poverty line in America. And it's also the cutoff for applications to the grants. But, uh, but you'll still vote for me, right? I'm the voice of your generation. I would rather cut off my own penis! 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 <laughs> Shalom. Your assumptions will be the death of you, sir. Uh, what the hell are you doing this here? This debt deal cuts Medicare and Medicaid, <coughs> and as a recipient of both, I can no longer afford to pay for my medication. Well, if you vote for me in 2012, I'll I promise... be dead by then. <laughs> Besides, I wouldn't vote for you. I'd rather tear out my vagina. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Who the hell are you? I'm a jet flying executive from Big Oil that you promised to tax. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make that happen. I know. And to think, the taxes would have been a drop in a bucket for a fella like me. <laughs> <laughs> like the Republicans said, you'll reinvest it in your company, creating jobs and new technology. Fuck that. I'm gonna buy a bunch of women and pee on them. Pee on them. What have I done? <laughs> I'm the New York Mets. We've had such a shitty season, 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 season. that we've had to hide, find some place to hide. Hide, 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 hide. And we've picked your nightmare. Nightmare, nightmare. Well, at least you're not complaining about the terrible debt deal I made. You made a terrible debt deal. No! No! The Rock! The Rock! Wake up! You're having a oh. horrible nightmare! Joe, I, that's the worst dream that. I had signed a terrible debt deal that went against everything I believed in. Also, the New York Mets were there. Oh, actually, you know what? That was no dream, honey. You actually did sign that in the policy. No! Oh, we're all calm down and speak to the speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I have never seen a congressman so tense. Mr. President, I'm honored just to shake your girly hand. And our countrymen won't kill us in the brutal way they planned. Because we did it. We fucking did it. And you didn't think we'd do it, but we really fucking did it. We signed the legislation. And provided some more fodder for this vocal masturbation. We, we did, did it. it. <laughs> we fucking did it. <laughs> we did it for democracy. <laughs> Election or endorsements or ourselves. You did, did it, it. Mr. Obama. You made a happy ending to this stupid melodrama. We love you. Speaker Boehner. <laughs> you beat the opposition, y'all. They couldn't be a sinner. We did it. We fucking did it! <laughs> now let's go out and have some fun! We'll blame it all on Washington! Or Boehner! Or Big Oil! Blame Canada! Because we did it! We fucking did it! And we'll do it again! In 2012! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you!
week it was. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver of Missouri called the New Deal to raise the debt ceiling a sugar-coated Satan sandwich. Hey, don't drag me into this mess, replied Satan. <laughs> Speaking of Satan, polygamist leader Warren Jeffs was convicted of having sex with underage girls. Jeffs will be allowed conjugal visits so long as it's not a school night. <laughs> President Obama admitted he felt wistful about turning 50 this week. Well, Mr. President, it could be worse. Some presidents are in prison clothes in a courtroom <laughs> on a gurney in a cage. <laughs> President Obama asked Tim Geithner to stay on as the Treasury uh, Secretary of the Treasury because the embattled secretary has a plan to save our economy. The plan is to sell Wyoming on eBay. <laughs> Many Democrats are upset at the concessions that Obama had to make in order to raise the debt ceiling, but frankly, anyone who knew Obama in college would have seen this coming. Alrighty, I am going to bet five. I will call. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I will bluff and raise ten. <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I'm going to call. <laughs> Me too. Uh, pair of kings, three tens. I have a uh, four and a jack. Uh, yeah, but, but Barry, you told us that you were bluffing. Well, I didn't have anything. It was a bluff. <laughs> yeah, but Barry, if you tell us what cards you have, then we can take advantage of you. But I'm not following. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Let's not play poker, okay? Let's just do something different tonight. You wanna order a pizza? Yeah, that sounds good. I'm munchied. I would love a pizza, but I, I should tell you right now that I am allergic to mushrooms. I love pepperoni, but I can't eat mushrooms, so. Ah, uh, that's a bummer, Barry. I, I love mushrooms. Okay, well, we'll get a pizza with pepperoni and mushrooms. <laughs> but, uh, but Barry, you just, you just said that you can't eat mushrooms. Oh no, they make my throat close up. <laughs> well, well, we don't have to have mushrooms. Well, I think it's important to reach across the aisle on this. Uh, compromise is key to this game. But Barry, it isn't a compromise if one of the ingredients will kill you. No, that's, 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 Barry, I really love mushrooms. Um. Hi, I'd like to order for delivery. Yes, uh, one large mushroom pizza. Uh, Obama, Columbia campus, uh, dorm three, room 200. Oh, no, don't worry. If it's not here in 20 minutes, we'll still pay full price. Barry, Barry, you got to grow some cojones, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, being an idealist is nice. It definitely helps you make friends and everything, but you got to toughen up or, or people are just going to walk all over you. You consistently show your hand and you consistently get taken advantage of because of it, and, and you never change your behavior after you do it. Look, I'm telling you this as a friend, okay? Because we're considering replacing you with this guy. Yeah! <laughs> What's up, dick butts? Your moms are whores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you guys playing poker? Not anymore. These chips are all mine. <laughs> What is this, a socialized dorm? You guys a bunch of socialist Nazis, huh? You know what, you're all going to hell because God told me so. Right? <clears throat> I saw this guy at a tea party in the commissary. He's a total dick. But he gets stuff done. And then he hangs with like the most smoking hot chicks ever. Okay. Well, surely we could all be friends together. No, hell no, you're a Muslim. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Muslim. Well, actually, he said that, and it's now kind of in our brains, so... Yeah, Barry, I'm real sorry, but we're gonna hang out with this asshole. Okay? <laughs> yeah, suck my dick. <laughs> hey, God, what are you doing? I'm just trying to be accommodating. like this. You can't see me right now. I'm not looking so good. I had to see you with my own eyes so I could realize what everybody knows. You're relapsing. And maybe I didn't want to see it with my own eyes, because then I would know. But maybe somewhere deep down inside I already knew. 
that troop over there. I just need some time. I can recover. I know it. I can shake it off. Just stick with me. Not just for me, but for us. Oh, you're breaking like something that's broken. And I can't stick around to watch you plummet again. I'm growing. I've got increasing numbers in the population to feed. I need someone I can rely on. Not someone who's just going to dwindle away on the latest fad or IPO that comes his way. But you can trust me. Just give me time. Trust in the old Dow. When we first met, we took over the format of government together. And together the both of us could rule the world. Oh, Dow, I remember. But I just can't seem to get past the shadow of the past. Can't you see? A ship is sunk. And I'm not naive enough to board a ship that's about to sink. But this ship has weathered many a stormy storm, and it has always taken you back to dry land, baby. Ow! Ow! <laughs> I told you! I needed someone I could rely on, someone who was safe and reliable. Someone, someone that I'm gonna leave you for, and I'm gonna leave you for someone that's precious. Precious? You're not talking about your old boyfriend, Gold. You know as well as I do that if it weren't for Gold, I never would have gotten past the scourge of colonialism. No, he helped me become my own entity. While well, you, you made me dependent on you. You bound up our fates in financial markets and expectations. Gold is real. Gold is now. And he's all I have. Maybe just stick with me. Come oh, get your hands off of me! Come in. Oh, please! Oh, Come please. In. Oh. Get your hands off of her. Come here, baby. Let me touch you good. Yeah. <laughs> I told you're the real man that I was looking for. I know, baby. You could say that twice to me. <laughs> say it two times. You're a real man. Thanks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We've just seen the Dow hit an all-time low on Thursday as gold hit an all-time high. Who looks crazy now? <laughs> <laughs> the NBA Commissioner David Stern announced that he will allow players to uh, play on teams overseas. Good news, Luke Walton. Now you can go anywhere in the world and sit on the bench. <laughs> oh, 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 come on! <laughs> Walton family was in the house today. <laughs> On Friday, the Senate passed legislation temporarily restoring funding to the FAA. This is good news for flyers because a prolonged FAA shutdown might have made flying inconvenient. Dude's <laughs> <laughs> late events at 9-11 to kids, Mike Huckabee is creating a cartoon. His next project, the Holocaust Funtime Puppet Show. <laughs> Mitt Romney accepted a million dollar donation from a mysterious law firm less than six months old, which closed down immediately after the donation. An Illuminati spokesman admitted it's really hard keeping this global conspiracy thing a secret these days. <laughs> and now we turn to Second City this week. Corey, uh, <laughs> correspondent Harry Ann Lavin as she sits down with Will Gluck, the writer-director of Friends with Benefits. Carrie Ann? Hi. I'm here with Will Gluck, the writer-director of the new film Friends with Benefits, starring Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis. Will, how did you get the idea for this movie? Well, in 1995, I was working on the John Marquette show when a cute young 12-year-old girl named Mila Kunis appeared. And I thought to myself how much I would really like to see Mila Kunis in her underwear. Uh, she's a 12-year-old girl. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I, I didn't act on it right away, uh, but... Um, oh, no, fast, these, these fast, fast, fast forward to... Oh, okay, fast forward to 1998. Uh, I'm in television, so I'm always watching television. I was kicking back watching That 70s Show, okay. starring Mila Kunis. And she still had that 12-year-old body, which is why I liked her. And I remembered how much I wanted to see Mila Kunis in her underwear. Uh, <laughs> Well, I watched Friends with Benefits, and this movie is about Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis, who are French trying to have casual sex, but they wind up falling in love. Oh, yes. On the surface. But what the movie is really about is Mila Kunis in her underwear. Um, this is, uh, it's, it's not about sex. It's not about Justin Timberlake. It's about Mila Kunis in her underwear. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you see Black Swan? Yes, <laughs> yes. I was frankly disappointed by it because, like many art films, <laughs> it failed to show Mila Kunis in her underwear. <laughs> As a writer director, do you feel like you need to go deeper? Uh, well, make no mistake. Uh, this is a very, very personal film for me. I have waited 15 years to see Mila Kunis in her underwear. I, I, I think if you watch the movie again, you'll see that more than anything, what this movie does is show Mila Kunis in her underwear. It doesn't try to be smart and romantic. It doesn't try to be uh, entertaining. Uh, what it does, more than anything else, is, is uh, it, it doesn't have to because it shows Mila Kunis in her underwear. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Meanwhile, on the East Coast, female college students are finding creative ways to pay for their college education. <laughs> Have you done this before? Yeah, it's how I paid for my last semester at NYU. Huh. What's your, uh, what's your major? Biology with an emphasis in anatomy. <laughs> Ironic. Oh, you think you're funny? No. No, I think I'm rich. And I think you need to pay for your college tuition, so let's get this party started. All right, but I'm calling the shots. I mean, I'm business class my sophomore year. Okay, like what? Like I get to play the music. I'll turn it up. <laughs> Why are we listening to this? Because they talk about war, my professors say that's bad. I like you. I like you. I like you. Can we get you a drink? Maybe a, uh, I got scotch and gin. <laughs> Do you have any Smirnoff ice? I like to put Skittles in it. It's pretty, and it reminds me of my boyfriend's lava lamp. <laughs> Boyfriend, huh? Are you yeah. sure he's okay with this? Okay with it? He's my pimp. What are you talking about? What up, Prusive? I totally raided your little mini fridge. I hope that was cool, dude. No, it's not cool. That cost ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> sure, and I get what you're saying, but why don't you look at how pretty Miss Girl I'm taking advantage of is? Hey, hey, pal, look, hey, that bag of Doritos is ten dollars. That bottle of water is ten dollars, and that's a hell of a lot more money than she's worth. Hey, <laughs> you more money than I'm worth. You stick up for me, Chad. Right. So I just read the Tao of Poo and. I'm kind of on a vow of nonviolence right now. So. Oh, God. What am I doing? I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm sorry. My wife is a tree sloth, but I can't do this to her. <laughs> hey! Look, I just look. put in my dental dam! I don't care. Listen. I can't sleep with you, okay? I can't pay you for sex. You're gonna have to, uh, look. Get a job. Get a student loan. That's the way it should be done. Hey, sorry. Uh, Babe, yeah. I just got a text on my boost, and uh, <laughs> Trump wants to talk to you again. Huh. So, taking the chips. Fine. <laughs> Only one thing I can do now. Yes, send housekeeping out. Thank you. <laughs> Gingrich headquarters. Shut up. <laughs> Mr. Gingrich, you wanted to see me? Yes, Tammy, have we received any more checks in the mail? We received one check for ten dollars. <laughs> ten dollars? It was the mail-in rebate from the printer we bought. Uh, <laughs> damn it, Tammy! <laughs> what was the point of promoting you from intern to campaign manager? Well, everybody else in your campaign quit, so... Fair enough. Go ahead and call your husband. We gotta get this campaign in high gear. You tell him you're gonna be home late tonight. Oh, Mr. Gingrich, I don't have a husband because I'm only in high school. <laughs> in other surprising news, all of your Twitter account followers, as it turns out, are fake. Damn it! I knew we shouldn't have gone with that Twitter service. We should have stuck with AOL. Everyone in this country uses dial-up. <laughs> Mr. Gingrich, even my grandmother doesn't use AOL. Listen, you need to reach out to the younger generations. I suggest you run an ad on a hip show like Modern Family. I like that idea. Why don't we run an ad on Party of Five? That Matthew Fox is bound to get his own show. <laughs> Mr. Gingrich, 
Which party of five has been off the air for 12 years? <laughs> Tired of your excuses. <laughs> Tired of your excuses, Tammy. We have to come up with a campaign song now. Okay, well, I suggest maybe Edge of Glory by Lady Gaga. It sends a strong How about we go with that Nirvana group? I hear they're really hip now. <laughs> Nirvana? Mr. Gingrich, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I quit. Quit? Well, you can't quit. How are we going to beat Clinton? Texas has closed one of its prisons, 
the prison was immediately purchased and reopened by California. <laughs> In New York, Jimmy McMillan, founder of the Rent is Too Damn High party, was evicted from his rent control apartment. At last, a politician who was 100% truthful. The rent truly was too damn high. In Arizona, two Border Patrol agents are accused of forcing suspected drug smugglers to strip down to their underwear, eat marijuana, and flee into the desert. The smugglers were found shivering and suffering from a severe case of the munchies. Do you have trouble getting your way? Watch how one man found a way to cope with that problem. Come on, man! It's Saber! Pick up the car! I can't! It's too heavy! What do you mean it's too heavy? Come on, man! You're gonna save her life! Are you, shouldn't you be having an adrenaline spike or something? I don't know. I, I guess I just I don't care that much if she dies. What? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I, I haven't known you very long. I mean... Maybe if I knew her more, I would care more, but I just... Hold on. Hey, hold on. This is a motivator. <laughs> oh, the fucking oh, 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 my God! <laughs> and that's how I saved her life. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's incredible. I don't know. It's, it just kicked in. Yeah, it was incredible. I, I pointed the gun at him, and he, like, threw the car like a city block. It was... It was <laughs> I haven't seen anything like that in my life. You know what's funny? I've been noticing... Whenever you point a gun at somebody, they'll do whatever you ask them to do. Really? Yeah. I've been doing it all the time lately. <laughs> hey, Andy, can you fix the copier? I can't get this thing to work. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to see. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know what's wrong with this. Fix the motherfucking copier now! No, do it! Do it! Go! Go! There you go! There you go! Here I am. Thai menu that uh, you ordered lunch from? Oh, I, I don't, I don't know. I know the fucking menu is in your desk. Now get it out! <laughs> move, move! <laughs> oh my god, what do you want? What do you want? Floor 12. Okay. Hey, no, Mary. <laughs> wow, Josh, it seems like you've really been getting a lot done at work. Oh, wow, it's, it's been real productive at work lately, I know. You know what sucks, though? Everyone's doing it now, so it's kind of lame. Yeah. Yeah. Fill out that spreadsheet! <laughs> have been getting married in droves. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, it looks as though that's not a reality just yet. You are so late for our two o'clock Ab Ripper X appointment uh, time. We are supposed to have roomy bonding time. I'm not working out tonight. Uh, um, excuse me? Am I the only one that remembered that it's a wet underwear night tonight at MJ's? Yeah, I'm not going to wet underwear night at MJ's tonight, okay? I'm moving to New York. Oh, I am. I'm moving there for good. I want more than a Botox treatment or a bikini wax or dinner at the French market. I want more than Grindr, the iPhone application that allows me to find anonymous sex anywhere at any time of day or night. I want more than West Hollywood can really offer me. I want to get more serious. I want to get married. Uh -huh. Fine, leave, you'll be back. No, I, I won't. Uh -huh. Excuse me. It is hot. It is summer. It is New York, okay? It's so humid, it only smells like roasted peanuts and feet. And you have to cover up your biceps for the next six months because it's freezing. How many shirts with sleeves do you own besides those? <laughs> like three. Oh my god, no, no, no. Rats, bed bugs, fat people. <laughs> Look, I am moving to New York, okay? And I'm gonna find myself an ex-male model who now works as a book editor. <laughs> and he has a penthouse in Tribeca, and I'm gonna marry that man. Two weeks.
Excuse me, uh, you may name is my star. Oh, you asshole. You smell like urine. I didn't read Lord of the Flies. Sorry, this isn't going to work. There's the door. No, I just wanted to be a dishwasher. You know what? <laughs> At the Union Square Cafe, we know our classics. <laughs> and you'd have better luck in Los Angeles. These single man blues are melted away. Silvio Berlusconi to go away. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher's role on Two and a Half Men has been revealed. He'll play a mysterious millionaire who sells cameras and is married to an older woman. Captain America, Kate Nazi Buck. Hey, Captain America. And now, in 2011, see Captain America make Leon Panetta the best Secretary of Defense ever. We can help us withdraw our troops from Iraq. What part of Germany? Iraq is. <laughs> Iraq is a country in the Middle East. The Middle East section of the Soviet Union. <laughs> Both my bombs are a big problem. I'll just throw my shield made of indestructible vibrating, but the bombs are destroyed. <laughs> Now, actually, that's what we don't want. See Leon Panetta instruct Captain America on 21st century geography. You're going to slip into Kabul. <laughs> You're gonna blend in with the locals to gather intel. But a red, white, and blue. This is a covert operation. Huh? Sometimes they get lost along the way. See, yeah. still so new and the building is so big. But they're in it for the long run. We have a situation in Libya. Ah, uh, that's in Africa. Can do. I'll take out all those Libyans. Now wait a minute. We want to help the Libyan rebels. This is a civil war we're involved in. Or Vietnam. <laughs> you know, just like an army and punch him in the face like an idiot. Uh, Mom, Dad, I have something to tell you. Um, I've been considering college. Son, I, uh, thought we talked about this. You were going to graduate and come work with me at the general school. Your father's been talking to the manager. <laughs> yes, Dad, I know that we talked about it already, but I've been talking to my guidance counselor, and he's, she says that I have the grades and that I should really consider going to college. 
All right, well, you can take night classes at the city college and then work during the day with me at the general store. <laughs> All right, but I have already applied to a university. What school? Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> Hogwarts? Trying to put us in the poorhouse, kid? <laughs> no, Dad, I know what you're going to say, okay? Hogwarts is only $41,000 a year, <laughs> all right? And, uh, plus robes and wands and gloves, but that's only like $160 on top of that. And, and I'll get a part-time job and help out, okay? And I know I can get that Native American scholarship because of Mom's grandmother. Yes, and with, <laughs> with scholarships and with grants, we can really do this thing. Well, as long as you're not selling yourself, honey, I guess that's fine. Quiet, Mother. <laughs> Listen. This is what's going to go down. <laughs> On Monday, you and I are going to get my pickup truck. We're going to drive down, and you're going to get a job at the general store. <laughs> you just want to see me fail, because you never went to college, and you want me to be a failure, just like you're a failure. Oh! <laughs> don't hit him, Gary! Daniel, don't disrespect your father! Oh. Your mother's just upset! Mom, quit defending him! <laughs> I'm crawling back once the load's too heavy. Gary, he really has done his homework. Look, it costs forty-four thousand to go to USC, fifty thousand to go to UCSB, and fifty-two to go to Lehigh. No one even knows where Lehigh is. <laughs> At Hogwarts, look, it, he'll develop skills that would create money out of thin air, better than government bailing out a bank. Dad, I will graduate, and I will make you proud. Let me see this brochure. <laughs> well, I can't read, but the pictures are nice, son. Go ahead. Go ahead and make the family proud. Amos conjunctivitis. <laughs> Santa Barbara. All right? And you let those prick ass bitches over at the Princeton Review know that when they rank us as the fifth greatest party school in this country, that they were wrong. Because we are the number one party school in this country. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Look, coach, I got a five liter pony keg of Heineken, and I'm ready. That's what I drink at church tailgating parties. I don't want to see beer here unless there's at least 50 gallons that you get out of yeah! Coach, coach! I've been showing, been showing a lot more cleavage. Wow. My grandma shows cleavage. I want to see those puppies come out from under their blanket and smile for all the people. Especially if there are video cameras around. I want to see those tits making things move around, making noise, slapping against each other. I want to see on every free porn site online sorority girls from this school drunk and naked. You got to get rid of your morals. You want morals? You gonna bring them young? Yeah. 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 This is impossible. We can't party like the people from Ohio, Georgia, Old Miss, uh, Iowa. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. You know what? You sound a lot like a kid I knew 25 years ago. Said the same thing to me. <laughs> 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 the space was covered with vomit. 
He looked up at me. He said, how can we compete? How can we compete with the big boys? Miami. UC. SD. <laughs> Slippery Rock. UConn, huh? <laughs> how can we possibly be as good a party school as those places? Do you think I listened to that? No. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Doesn't he know what we did? Starting that next day, we started partying and drinking and dancing and screwing and drinking and dancing and partying and those four words over and over. <laughs> yeah, sure, we were a bunch of ragtag college students trying to make our mark on this world. And people started to take notice. And then just a couple weeks before Playboy launched the top 10 party schools in 1987, I was at a frat party just like this one right here. I ran into that kid again. We were both trying to convince a pole dancer to let us run a train on her. <laughs> he pissed his pants so bad he slipped at his own puddle of urine. <laughs> Fell on the floor, he looked up at me. And he said to me, Let's do this, okay? <laughs> we can do it, coach. We can be number one. Let's win this one for the stripper! Yeah! yeah! Coach, what was the kid's name? I don't remember. He died, but... <laughs> uh, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is... Later that month, Playboy came out with the top party schools in the United States. We weren't number ten. We weren't ranked fifth either. We were Chico State. <laughs> we were ranked number one. <laughs> shows that 47% of adults in Detroit are functionally illiterate. Luckily, none of them were able to read the report. <laughs> U.S. officials confiscated $180 million in cocaine found on a submarine used by drug cartels. Authorities wonder who all lives on the sub and if their friends are all on board and, you know, if many more of them might be next door. <laughs> Rock band Kings of Leon canceled the remaining 29 dates of their U.S. tour due to illness and exhaustion. The band's doctor explained that they've been living with the disease overatitis for the last three years. <laughs> Though still recovering from a head wound, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords returned to the House of Representatives to vote for the debt ceiling deal. Gifford's brain damage made her the ideal candidate for negotiating with the Tea Party. <laughs> Hello! We're the Digital Pirates of Low Security Team! And here at Low Sec Security, we've hijacked your computer to bring you this important public service announcement. As always, bringing you the fun and excitement the internet lacks! Do you enjoy lulzing as much as we do? Ah, uh, lulzing is the best. Lulzing occurs anytime your normal amusement levels reach a maximum capacity. Are you rolling on the floor laughing your ass off? Well, my friend, you appear to be lulzing. Ah, if lulzing is still a foreign concept to you, just Google epic fail. Soon you will be lulzing for days. Everybody needs a good laugh now and then. Like, remember when our good friends at Visa and MasterCard, do you remember how they weren't our friends so we hijacked them because PayPal tried to stick it to the collective man? <laughs> I lose continuously over that. Even more than the Rebecca Black video for Friday. I cannot wait for our next little thing. If you would like to join us, simply Google Anonymous and buy one of those V for Vendetta masks. <laughs> Government officials call us terrorists and say that our presence on the internet causes threats to normal people. If I had a dollar coin for every buzzword you just used. <laughs> of course, 
We are just doing it to infuse a sense of fun and enjoyment back in the lives of millions of Americans. Because freedom is fun and nonviolence is cute like kittens in a basket. So please disregard the media when they say things about your kitten-like friends at LulzSec. And you'll be having fun, 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 in that order. This message was sponsored by CuteOverload.com and arrested a drunk man for letting his eight-year-old drive him home. The man said, what was I supposed to do? I had ten beers. He only had one. <laughs> MTV turned 30 this week, which means you can now see it on VH1. Thursday's <laughs> <laughs> stock market... Thursday's stock market drop has renewed fears of a double-dip recession. The economy is so bad, the Dow fell 500 points in the time it took me to tell this joke. I, uh, I feel like I'm in limbo. All right! Welcome back to Bandstand, and let's introduce the craze that's creeping across America, the recession air! Woo! 